link, but no Saturday link. All good. Appreciate your time. We'll uh, start out with the opening statement. We'll open up for questions. Uh, yeah, so obviously just thrilled for our seniors, you know, not only go out on a positive note sweeping the weekend series, but, you know, got contributions up and down from all of them. Obviously, Will Fleming with a great outing um, gets the win on the mound. Um, you know, Michael Ludwig, although he didn't have any hits, he walked and scored a run. He made a great running catch in left field. Shane Muntz hit two home runs. Chris Sanzilli had a huge two out single. Um, you know, after they walked Bobby, Bobby obviously hit a home run to get us on the board. Um, you know, so up and down, Reese Robinson gets two big outs. Cole McNamee hits a home run, gets three big outs. Um, and then Antonio Menendez, let's not forget Tony, as I told him after the game, I mean, he, he literally gave his right arm to the program. So, um, Again, just proud of those guys. All eight guys got degrees, and all eight all eight guys contributed to a, to a win today. Sorry if I missed this, but um, could you scripted a, a senior day any better? Well, yeah, one that that leads to us going to the conference tournament, but. Um, <laughs> other than other than that, no. As far as the results of today's game, no. I mean, I I, can't, I couldn't even fathom a senior day that went any better than that, quite honestly. Um, and um, you know, again, just so proud of these guys. And um, all ten of our RBIs came from seniors today. Ryan gave me that stat as as I was walking up here. So um, so again, no. To answer your question, no. It's pretty awesome. Walt, what was the magic formula this weekend and where the heck has it been all season? Yeah, I mean, again, Pitt came in, they were scuffling a little bit and, um, you know, and they were pressing. I mean, they're, they've kind of not only a, a host bid on the line, but, a, but even an NCAA tournament appearance on the line. And, uh, and you can tell they were pressing and, and we got in the first two games we got up and Brian Cusick threw really well. And then, you know, again, baseball's momentum. Um, you know, for a while today, we didn't have the momentum and we fell behind early and it was two nothing, but, you know, we felt like we were going to break through and then Shane hit that home run and, and the floodgates opened. So um, it's just one of those things where this weekend, really for the first time, you know, probably all year, you know, really since Florida State, at least, you know, we were able to grab momentum and, and our bullpen was able to hold it. One of those things that you really wish you had some more baseball to play in the coming weeks to see how this would play out. No, for sure. I mean, I've been you, you've heard, guys have heard me say that if we get to the conference tournament, we're going to be a dangerous team, and and I think we would be. I think there's probably some teams that are glad, you know, we're not in the 12 spot because I, I take our chances right now of, uh, of of taking a deep run. But um, you know, obviously, we didn't do enough all year to to earn that right, and. Um, you know, disappointing and we've got some exit meetings coming up and some decisions to make moving forward about the program and we've got to, you know, take the summer reevaluate everything and, and get better at what we do. Um, where do you, uh, it might be difficult to answer now in the immediate aftermath, but where do you see changes possibly being made? Uh, again, I think it's more changes in how we do things, um, you know, and, and, uh, and, you know, this, as I've said before, I mean, this season felt a little like the 2015 season um, where we just had too many guys in the dugout that, that aren't committed to being baseball players. They're, they're at Wake Forest for other reasons. Um, and, you know, we need everybody pulling the same direction. It's a, it's a tough league and, uh, and you've got everybody on the same page. And, and we need to, in the off season, we need to figure out who's all in and, and, and who's not. And we need to kind of trim the fat, so to speak. Why do you think it happened that way? Is it is it outside influences with draft eligible guys, or or is it other factors? I think it's a you know again I think it's a compilation of things. I think some of it's tied to recruiting, um, you know, and um, you know again getting guys in here that are are you know geared towards professional baseball is a is a, an important thing. But also, you know, guys that are that are team guys, and, and you know, one of the things is, you know, we had such great leadership on that 2017 team, um, and we got spoiled a little there. And then that next year, you know, um, you know, when everybody was gone, you know, that was the year we had an issue with our seniors and the and them being suspended for 42 games. So we went through a season um, with no senior class, and um, and that, you know, that so the guys in the program right now, you know 
quite honestly, haven't really had a leadership example, um, you know, in their in their career here. So, again, we need to we need to change that that script and and um, and being more involved. And, you know, we, we planned on spending a ton of time on team culture this year, but you couldn't do it, you know, with COVID and me not making excuses. But I mean, we never had the team together. You know, everybody was they eat by themselves. They 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 ride nine feet apart on the bus on two different buses. I mean, there's just it's just hard hard to get your team together. So we, we weren't able to do some of the culture thing, culture building things we wanted to do, uh, which which certainly next year we will be able to do, knock on wood. Can you, how, how does the culture change um, when you're recruiting so far out? I mean, you get verbals from ninth and 10th graders and they're committed for so long. How does, how does it change over one summer well, I, I think you have to start changing their mindset early. You know, right now these kids grow up in this travel ball world where, you know, they're the center of the universe. They go out there, they throw their two or three innings. They try to throw as hard as they can. They don't worry about wins and losses. They don't worry about, um, you know, again, off-speed stuff necessarily. They're just trying to touch big numbers on the radar gun. And then you get to college and coaches are talking about winning and sacrificing for the team and being able to do things that they've never done in their life. So I, I think what it is, is it starts the minute you get the commitment from the kid that that culture building starts. And we've had several Zoom calls with our 2021 class, um, you know, to get them prepared for what things are going to look like here. We're super excited about that class. And then we're going to do the same thing with our 22 class. I, I think what ha has to happen is we've just got to start that culture building much, much sooner. Tom, was it was it good to see just all the smiles at the end of this game? I mean, you could tell the emotion, the excitement. You, you guys genuinely had fun playing the game of baseball today and, and this weekend. No, without question. I mean, that's the best feeling in the world as a coach. I mean, that's what that's what you strive for week in, week out. And and obviously we lost that as we were struggling and didn't have that. But it sure was fun to see it this weekend. And that's something we're going to hold on to and build off of for next year and, and talk about that a lot. Because again, I think, a, you know, a loose team and is, a, and a, is a confident team and a confident team is a successful team. So, um, you know, that, that fine line between looseness and discipline is, is important. Anything else guys? Thanks Tom. Appreciate it. Thanks coach. Appreciate all your time. Thanks Tom. Tom. Appreciate you guys all year, as always. You guys are the best.